from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? What? You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down because mm-hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy but it's quite hard the first time and we haven't figured that out yet the sentinel system is really easy to set up so what i was thinking was why don't we put it in the uh, lemons car and we'll worry about the aim data information separately and we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want, and we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have the data inside, but we have the data X outside, so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does it, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen, and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor. If you were at home and I was at a track or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, it depends, depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> So, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need, we could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what's uh, the only downside I see about this? What? Your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have maybe two. Depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the project. We got to get that ready for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. Dominating with Dawson, dominating with Dawson. I need my dominating with Dawson with Dawson. What? Dawson. Yeah. What? Hey, let's do it. What? I know. I'm running out of new ones. If anybody wants to write in with some new ones that I could use, <laughs> Garage I Heroes and Training so at gmail.com. I am so happy. I am so happy Ben's here. I love these segments. I learned so much. Hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm uh Really excited to talk about racing and uh, hopefully teaching people some things to help them go faster in a safer way. So we've got a yeah, racing one one question. Okay. And uh, we are not only going to define what these are, but we're going to talk about why you need to be there. Okay. Ben Dawson, Ben Dawson, what is a driver's meeting? Oh, that's where you're going to get together with whatever organization has brought you to the track race organization, DE group, town trial, whatever. Uh, that's where they get everybody together at the beginning of the event. And uh, the officials who are running the, uh, the event, the organizers will tell you what the rules are for your event, whether it's uh, a racing event where they're going to talk to you about the rules around yellow flags or you know, a, a DE event where they're going to talk to you about which zones are okay for passing and which places aren't. 
that sort of thing is going to be covered uh, in, in your driver's meeting. It's always essential information to tell you where you're going for the weekend. It might be instructive about the flow of traffic in the pits. Uh, it may be instructive about what your pit stop procedures are if it's a if it's an endurance race. Uh, you know, they may tell you, yeah, you know, this weekend we're going to let you have uh, an extra person over the wall more, more, more than we usually would just to uh, scrub out the armpits of the super hot driver. You know what I mean? Like that, sometimes there might be a special dispensation based on conditions. It's just, uh, you never want to miss a driver's meeting. I, don't, I'm, I know I'm already getting on a soapbox, but a driver's meeting is, is essential if you're going to be at an event. You've got to go just to hear the special things. You might be used to how things work at that track. It might be your local track, but uh, the people there running the event might want to do things differently than you're used to. So that's an especially good time to go to one. But but Ben, I, I went to the driver's meeting last year with them and I, they we're just doing the same thing. So, you know, I can skip this year's because, you know, I don't need to never go. know. You never know what they're going to change. I remember, uh, for example, when I was first racing lemons, uh, the rules around the local yellow were you would just drive fast all the way up to where the local yellow flag itself was, where the flag station was. And then you'd back off. Uh, and then, you know, different different places, different uh, year, they change it to where as soon as you can visibly see the yellow, you need to back it down. So you don't drive all the way up to the flag station where the incident might be. You start slowing down sooner. So so those kind of things shift and change. So even if you think you kind of had an idea how they did it last year, you can't assume that they're going to do it the same way. Because safety standards evolve and change. You can always have good ideas that, that might that might uh, change some procedures somewhat. So it's always worth going. You mm-hmm. can... You, uh, if you're in a if you're in a pinch and one of you has to be under the car fixing this one thing, you know, and 30, 30 minutes before you need to get the grid, you, you might be able to deputize the rest of your team to go to it. If you're the lead mechanic, and you've got to fix it, but you're going to drive later. So you may have to, yeah, every now and then it may come up where you yourself might have to miss a driver's meeting just due to an upset condition. But if you do just, I, I just always have to be conscious of it and say, Hey, I pick one person on the team say, Hey, will you kind of text back to everybody's phone? Just sort of live text this thing. Anything they say is out of the ordinary or something we're not used to. Make sure, and, and I just ask them to do it, do it live instead of coming back and telling me. Like I, I said, let's just start a text. You know, get on the team text thread and just be saying, "Oh, they just said this about yellow flags." And so, you hate to ever have to miss one. It's going to happen to you, but you just got to make sure you cover your bases and still don't miss any of the salient details about your weekend, especially things that are unexpected. That it might be different. You know? Did we miss anything, Miss Vicky? I don't think so. I think he covered it very well. He did. But you know what he did? He brought up something else. What's that? The team text thread. Got to have one. You know what? Lemons really needs to do that. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. No, I just it, the oh, the team thread. thread. The team I'm, one. Okay. The team. It is, nice how, it is nice how AER texts you what, everything that's going on all the time with the freaking. It is. But definitely, that's one of the the tricks of the trade. You you quickly find out that anybody who's associated with your team, you have a text thread with everybody on it. It could be as simple as, hey, lunch is served, or B, car is broken. And uh, while everybody should follow the BARF principles or should bring a radio, um, you know, the text thread's a, a good backup. Yeah. My team, my team doesn't own enough, doesn't own enough radios for everybody to be walking around with one. So the text threads are definitely our default. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then, uh, like Grid Life has one, and AAR has one, and, and Lucky Dog has one as well. Is is a uh, event wide text thread? Yeah, which is great. Right. Be- yeah. Um, well, you know, and, and AERs is, is event wide, but also specific to you and your card. So like, hey, your card just left the pits. Your card just came in. So it's you're getting macro and micro information from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's nice because, you know, hey, does somebody have the uh, an engine hoist in the paddock? Or, yeah, or yeah ha- I love that. Oh, okay, so somebody needs an E30 axle. That's such a great idea because instead of having to do the lap up and down the pits, like looking for every E30 team or whatever, you can sometimes get to it faster when they just blast out mm-hmm. mass text to everybody. I think that's really useful. Yeah, because sometimes it's hard to tell who's racing what because if they're racing well, their car's out on the track and you can't tell right, which yeah. car is where. So. Do you have a BMW? No, you have a BMW. No, no, <laughs> you've got a BMW. So it, it's been my experience that, that 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 process really does shake out the parts you need. Though, <laughs> like people just come out of the woodwork and kind of they'll come find you a lot of times. Exactly. Um, you know, if it's if it's this pit, you know, they're in this pit looking for so and so. People kind of jump up and down, especially racers. It seemed to be a community just jumping up and down to help each other. And sometimes just 
sometimes it's more of a show of like, look at all the spares I bring. You dummy, of course I've got a radiator. You know, sometimes I feel like I feel like teams are like, yeah, look how squared away we are. And we'll also help you. Whatever it is, showing off or just being a bro, it's always nice to get some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, most most race teams will uh will give you any spare parts that they have that you need because it's a lot more fun to race with you and beat you when you're on the track than it is to right. watch you sit in the paddock and you know break your knuckles trying to make your Volkswagen part fit into a BMW chassis or whatever. So there, you know. there were only a couple of times I've ever been, I've ever raced with people who I was like, wow, I hope they don't make this race. Uh, when I was racing cars, there was a guy who was new and he was just, just totally unconcerned about doing it safely. Now, every time, every time something bad would happen to him where it was sideline him, I'm like, well, at least I don't have to race with that guy tonight. Uh, you know, and there were a couple of teams uh, in another uh, endurance racing organization that I don't really run with very much. Uh, sounds like, sounds like slam car, uh, but yeah. actually is champ car. But there were a couple of champ car teams that they would let just run and, and hit a bunch of people. And, and I was just like, I, if I saw them sitting in the, in the, in the paddock, I was like, okay, good. But no, like 99% of the time, almost everybody, I want, I would rather have them out on the course with us than, than languishing in the pits. So I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, and just in case people aren't aware, if you go to your first race, there is usually a beginner drivers meeting yeah. which is which is separate from the the general racing population meeting and the beginner drivers meeting is always of value and you know i would even consider going to it i do uh, I, I would i went to the aer when i've, I've raced aer a handful of times but i guess people on my team had no that's just where the coolest air was so i sat through the, the, the aer rookie meeting and learned a couple of things you always learn something in those even if you think you're pretty spread away Mm -hmm. and uh you know definitely go to if it's your first race that you have to go i mean like yeah. do not skip and if it's not your first race it's not a bad thing to go to yeah so. I, I also one one more thing i'd add to attendance attendance at the rookie meeting is uh i think it was like it was I think it was race for a second ever race and i think they'd only raced lemons and hadn't ever raced champ car before so my first race with them i went to the rookie meeting with all of them because they were all brand new and i kind of helped break down what the guy was saying to, in terms you know, just we all sort of just did a rookie meeting like a, with a handful of folks mm -hmm. uh, but i think it's important if you got some experienced people on your team and you got rookies on the team at least one or two experienced people go with the rookie to the meeting to sort of just help refilter the information as it might pertain to exactly your team you know what i mean yeah. um, so i think it's good to be there to sort of contextualize that information for a rookie so if you can have veteran teammates to go with your, your rookies because uh, you know endurance teams are always rookies coming and going you know people are always falling in that team so I think it's sure. important to sort of nurture your own rookie because because the more your rookies know potentially the more competitive you're going to be so it's good to have them as in tune with what's going on as you possibly can and so sometimes i mean you got to miss the dinner and go to the rookie meeting with them or whatever but i think it's mm -hmm. worth it there's value in it to me um, so just thought i would add that yep yep and it's not just competitiveness it's safety too because you know there oh, could be yeah, some yeah, yeah. local safety, blah, blah, blah. local track thing going on or you know True, hey true. hey this is this is broken or this is in disrepair or somebody's not going to be in flag station number seven or you know right. it's good to know stuff sure. so did we miss anything miss vicky i don't think so okay think we great. got it all right spectacular ben another dominic with dawson in the books so easy so easy <laughs> thank you thank you no, no, thank you. No, thank you. Please, <laughs> please, okay. uh, thank you. Yes. How can I be the man when you demand? Anyway, we're out. <laughs>